Most people in life are familiar with Howard Stern. Howard Stern is a amazing kind of man, and that how he came into fame came right out of college, and his college program sort of changed the programming in his college. It completely transformed the amount of students that were listening to their music channel and that were paying attention to what he had to say. He talked about controversial topics and played a lot of cool music of the day. But he went on to a career in Hollywood and on fame and on cable and on satellite networks and for all I know he may still be out there but on our airwaves. But for those of us who are starting fresh, we know that any good company takes five years to build and any good real career takes at least ten. In life we have moments of time to speak the truth of well, our manhood and his manhood was actually betrothed to someone else until he screwed it all up and got a new life. You know, there are people out there who do that, that they have something good going, but it's not right for them. It's not what God is challenging them to become, and it's not the right way for them to go about doing it. In life, we know that sex and guttural language sells. We also know that a swearing pastor is often heard more because Goody Two Shoes people go to Goody Two Shoes church and churches and live fairly Goody Two Shoes, in theory, lives. They often lie to themselves about their life. They often lie to themselves about their future and their retirement. And most of them don't have a penny or a lick or a retirement account or one thing in the bank to plan for those elder years. You see, we might have a lot of food pantries, but they're often run by a lot of elderly who are probably benefiting from the food pantry, which is perfectly good and perfectly fine for their volunteer service. But they should be allowed to eat there. They should be allowed to shop there. They should be allowed to do things there. But they have to be willing to make relationships with people. What I'm absolutely disgusted about is when I walk around to just be curious and to figure out, okay, who lives here and what sort of things are they playing with and what sort of things are they doing and what should I learn about this sort of company that I often see in the trash and how many of these are around town means that somebody's really promoting this stuff all over the place, which means impact on restaurants and impact on on, uh, dollar general type stores and a lot of impact is, is totally real. But what I also know is that students on campus are not thinking about how to live as frugally as they should. They're not figuring out how to balance their bank accounts very good. Because I often overhear girls saying, hey, do you have money? I don't have any cash right now. I'm out of money. I haven't gotten any more money from my parents right now. And I'm saying, they're going, here's what you're doing. You're spending your money in the wrong places. You're not investing in the right uh, grocery stores. And you're not thinking about how to stretch your money so that you will actually have some cash for the weekends and the playtime that you want to handle. We're also putting our children inside these monstrous apartment complexes that have all these amenities, which most apartment complexes and Midwest communities don't have as rich of a health club or as rich of a coffee shop involved in them. Or they certainly don't have themselves right on top of an uh, alcohol shop. And now we have a pot shop on the street. And I'm just going sort to of surprised at that based on what the guys who work there told me about their shop. What I saw them doing was just pulling an old man's leg. And I was kind of pissed off because I'm curious enough about the law. I'm curious enough about the, the product. I'm curious about, enough about the medicinal purposes. But they weren't doing one fucking thing in their outdoor selling of that thing to educate me in any way, which was foolish. Because you never know who I might share that information with. They don't have the right to say that. But what we were really talking about was food. Now that I've got your attention, I'm talking about everything else. You see, there are food companies that actually take their trash and mix it all. They take their rubber gloves and they throw it in with their plastics and then they take good, perfectly good quality bread, perfectly good quality cheese and meats, and perfectly good tomatoes and and cucumbers and lettuce and put it all together in trash. And I sit there and I look at that company and go, who the fuck did you hire as your employee? Because what I really want to say to you is you've hired a fucking moron today and they're going to keep training the others to be morons too about food. You see, what you should be doing is have a trash can for your gloves. And what you should be doing is having that same trash can for your leftover potato chips bags and anything that's plastic so it all can be recycled together. And then your cardboard should go into a different space. And then your things that can be fed to a pig or to uh, be put back in the earth in terms of someone's garden to make it more rich soil and more healthy soil for growing things like your vegetables and whatnot that gets thrown away should go someplace else. Anything that's a meat or a quality cheese that didn't quite make it right could go gently into a container and be held for someone in the refrigerator for later at night who is impoverished and really needs the protein at night. You see, what I can't get over is how you're mixing all this stuff. What I can't get over is how much food you actually throw away on the weekends. I'm appalled. There are starving people in America. There's a lot more people with COVID losing jobs, and you're sitting there mixing and ruining your food and good quality food. 
and it might have expired for sale, but it didn't expire in terms of its nutrients. It didn't expire in terms of what it could be done to serve our squirrels who love to pull the leaves off the trees in the fall and help us to prune and all that sort of stuff. It could be wonderful for the swine that feed us and literally allow us the beautiful pork that we use on barbecues and put in uh, sauces and whatnot. But you're not thinking that as a company, and that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. America is not made of a throwaway society, and people are not throwaway. But you're not training your people how to handle food. And you're doing a horrible job. And I know one of the managers that runs that sandwich shop. I'm about ready to rip her ass outside down one or the other. But here's the problem. She's too emotional to get it. And I don't like that. You see, if you've got a very emotional employee, they're going to lie, steal, and cheat you out of your food. And they're just going to piss all over anybody that gives them a suggestion because it didn't come from top-down management. And it didn't come in their little handbook. And openly, people don't learn how to kaizen or improve things in any way if they don't listen to their customers' feedback. Because my guess is other people have seen that. And my also guess is that anything that annoys one person in a, in a food line at a store annoys about 200 other people as well. The difference is only one person says it and 200 people don't.